All right, grade tens. This is the video um, for the example I gave you guys yesterday, and I asked you to try and do it. And then I said I would give you a video today on exactly how to do it. Um, so this is continuing analytical geometry. Um, the first part of this question I didn't actually give you to do, but I just wanted to do this as an example, and then afterwards I'll get to the one that um, I did ask you guys to do. Okay, so example two. It said, show that a triangle with vertices A, B, and C is isosceles. So they've given us three different points here, and they've asked to prove that the triangle is isosceles. Okay, now just a reminder of what we did yesterday. These are your formulas, distance, midpoint, gradient, inclination. Um, you've got two little rules about perpendicular and parallel. Uh, intercepts, just a reminder of what that was, but this is basically what you will use when you are doing analytical geometry. Okay, so going on this question, they have said show that a triangle with those vertices, vertices, sorry, is isosceles. Okay, so before I get started, if I think about an isosceles triangle, what does that mean? An isosceles triangle means two sides will be equal. So if this is a B, C, then A, B will equal A, C. Obviously, we don't know the triangle. Maybe it's like this. Maybe it's A, B, C, and A, B equals C, B. Or, you know, C, B equals A, C. We don't actually know how this triangle looks because all they've given us is points. Are you with me? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to guess. We're going to try find the length of A, B. And then maybe we can try find the length of AC. Let's let's follow this first model, AC. See if um, those two lengths are equal. If not, then we must try the next combination of two because we're trying to prove that it is isosceles. Okay. So remember, what is your distance formula? I've got it over here for us. This is my distance. So distance is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so let's go fill in these points. Let's try a and b. So distance for a, b, I'll write it there, will be the square root of, so if we start with this x1 minus, we use that x3. Then I must go back to this y, so it'll be 1 minus that y is six okay so if i do that it'll be one minus three squared plus one minus six squared okay and that'll be root 29. now let's go and try ac so i gave myself a visual but i don't know if that's the combination of sides that we're looking for yet but anyways so ac will be one minus 6 squared plus, and then y here is 1 minus 3 squared. So let's check what that gives us. So square root of 1 minus 6 close bracket squared plus 1 minus 3 squared. And guess what? We get root 29. Okay, so AB is equal to AC. Should that not have worked, you could have tried A, B, and then B, C using the different points and filling them into the formula. So therefore, triangle A, B, C is a sosceles um, because um, A, B is equal to A, C. Okay, does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, I thought I'd just include a little word question there because you will get ones like this in exams. Um, but anyways, moving on to the actual question I gave you for homework to try. Um, I've got the drawing over here, but I'm going to start by reading through the question and then writing anything in if it's not written there, and then we'll get to the questions. So it says in the diagram below, P is 7 and 4. There they've got it written. Q is 6 and 6, they've got it written. R is 0 and 3, they have it. And S is T and K. I don't know if you can see it on this drawing, but anyways, they've got T and K. That's the coordinate there. So obviously, this is going to be something we have to find. So T represents X, K represents Y. 
You should have seen that when you tried this example. Calculate the length of PQ and leave your answer in third form. Okay, so they want this length over here, the distance of PQ. By now, we should start being familiar with the distance formula. We should almost have it in our head. X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. Okay, so it will be the square root of, now you can choose which one to start with. I'm just going to start up here. So my x is 6, so it'll be 6 minus this x, which is 7 squared, plus this y is 6 minus that y is 4 squared. So let's check what our answer is. Square root of 6 minus 7, close bracket squared, plus 6 minus 4, close bracket squared. And the answer is root 5. They told us we can leave our answer in third form, so I'm going to leave it like that. So um, this is 2.2.1. Um, I'm just labeling it according to um, the example because I set this as example 2, but this would have been 3.1, 3.2, so number it however you want. 2.2.2, .2 okay. It says if t is 7 over 2 and 7 over 2 is the midpoint of qs, determine the coordinates of s. So they're saying if the midpoint of qs, let's say this is... Um, T, point T, I'm just going to draw in the line, which is 7 over 2 and 7 over 2, then we must please find um, point S, which is represented by T and K. Okay, so obviously they've given us the midpoint there. So we're going to most likely use which formula? You can do it, it is the midpoint theorem. Okay, so the midpoint theorem is x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay, that is the midpoint theorem. I mean, the yeah, the midpoint formula, not midpoint theorem. Sorry, my mind is elsewhere. But anyways, um, okay, so this would represent your x coordinate and this would represent your y coordinate. So this gives you that answer and this gives you that answer. Okay, so let's start with the x1. We know that 6, right, which is this x, plus this x, which is t, we've called it t, over 2, is going to be equal to this midpoint, which is 7 over 2. And if I do the y1, 6, which is the y, plus k, which is what they've labeled this one, over 2 will be equal to this middle coordinate which is 7 over 2. So now I can go work it out, right? I can say 2 times 7 over 2 is, um, so it's going to be 6 plus t, 2 times 7 over 2 because I'm taking it that side just becomes 7 and t will be if I take the 6 over it becomes 7 minus 6 which is 1. Okay, same thing here if I multiply the 2 on that side, 6 plus k is equal to 7 over 2 times 2 is 7, then minus, then k is going to be equal to 1. So point S is 1 and 1. Do you guys understand what I did? I basically reversed the, um, the formula because the formula says that this x plus this x divided by 2 gives me the midpoint. And that y plus that y divided by 2 gives me the midpoint. But I have the midpoint. So now, instead of writing whatever this would have been, I used the letter that they gave me, which was T. And for the Y, I used the letter, which is K. And then I, I worked it out to find the T and the K. All right. Okay. 3.3. Um, if the coordinates of S are 1 and 1, so I mean, I must be correct if they've used that in the following, um, the following question, show that PR equals QS. So they want us to show that PR, this one over here, is equal to QS. Okay, so what can I do? I can just find the distance of each of them and then check if they are equal to each other. Okay, so let's just get another page here. Okay, so just uh, over here, we've discovered that this is the point 1 and 1. 
Now they want us to go and show that QS is equal to PR. So I'm going to go and I'm going to work it out. So um, P, oh sorry, let's start with QS. The distance of QS x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared okay so that's going to be equal to x2 is um, 6 minus 1 and y is 6 minus 1 because they're the same anyways so let's see what that is plus 6 minus 1 squared is going to be 5 root 2. Okay, so now let's go and check um, PR. Okay, so it's going to be the square root of, and let's check, let's start here. So x is naught, so it'll be naught minus 7 squared plus, and then y will be 3 minus 4 squared okay so square root of naught minus seven squared plus three minus four squared okay which is five root two so they said prove that p or qs equals pr that is what we have done qs is equal to pr we use the distance formula okay that was 2.2.3 Okay, let's do 2.2.4 all right it says show that qr is perpendicular so they want us to show qr is perpendicular to rs okay now reminder what happens when things are perpendicular okay if two lines are perpendicular what happens if i multiply their gradients together what must i get minus one Okay, so whenever they say prove or show that two lines are perpendicular, you need to go and get the gradient for each line, then multiply it together, and if it equals minus 1, then you are correct. You have shown that. Okay, so they want QR. So let's go find the gradient of QR. What is my gradient formula? Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1 just by the way i have sent this to the group but i expect you to write this out into your books because you're going to refer to it all the time okay so m of qr hope i'm still in the shot here let me do this okay m of qr qr is here is going to be y minus y so it's 6 minus 3 over 6 minus 0 2 I mean sorry 3 over 6 minus 0 will be 6 so then that will equal 1 over 2 okay then we must still go do the gradient of um, R s okay which again is y minus y over x minus x so it's going to be 3 minus 1 over naught minus 1 which is essentially going to be equal to 3 minus 1 is 2 over negative 1 which is basically equal to negative 2 okay so the gradient of qr is a half the gradient of rs is minus 2 so now what we need to do is we need to say m of qr times m of rs is equal to a half times negative 2 which is equal to negative 1 therefore qr is perpendicular to rs okay i hope that makes sense because remember if two lines are perpendicular when you multiply their gradients you get negative 1 it's just what happens when you multiply a half and negative 2 okay the next question 2.2.5 hence what type of special quadrilateral is PQRS? Motivate your answer. Okay, so of everything we've done so far, let's just go back a bit. Um, we've proven, um, I think it was the previous question, 
that QS, okay, is equal to PR, all right? We've also proven that they are, that all the corners are 90 degrees, they are perpendicular. Um, I felt like we did another one, did we not do opposite sides? Maybe not. Okay, but essentially what kind of shape is this? You can say it is a rectangle, okay? What, what motivates this? Well, we've proved that the diagonals are equal to each other. Okay, we did that in the previous question. And all, um, and the, yeah, the corners, all corners are 90 degrees. So that's two reasons why um, they could be rectangles. I felt like we had proven that the opposite sides are equal, but I don't think we actually did. Um, we did PQ. Yeah, we found one of these sides. If you wanted to, you could also, to motivate your answer further, we did this length in the first question, which was root 5. So if you wanted to do this length and say an opposite side is equal, you could also do that to motivate that it is a rectangle. Okay, um, lastly, 3.6, calculate the size of RSQ. Okay, so RSQ is this angle over here. Okay. Now, this requires a little bit of knowledge about um, properties of a rectangle, but I'm just going to do it for you over here. Angle S equals 90 degrees, correct? We, we did that in the previous one. Um, because there we proved that these two are, or that it's a rectangle and everything is perpendicular. And, so therefore, R S Q will be equal to 45 degrees. Okay, and this is a property of rectangles, you must say. Why? Because diagonal of a rectangle bisects the angle into which it runs. Okay, this is like grade 9 work, you guys. I should actually find you that page of all the properties, I might send it, although I think we, we recently did it in Euclidean geometry, but I'll double check. But anyways, um, the diagonal bisects the angle into which it runs. So therefore this one, if the whole thing is 90, that angle must be 45. Okay, I hope that makes sense, great tense.